Good afternoon to our audience. Good afternoon, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Jason McSparren, and I'm here with Dr. Jeffrey Sachs. He's a university professor and director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University. As you know, this is our second session today on, uh, at the virtual symposium on World Environment Day. And the title of our session today is Building Resilient Health Structures to Combat Novel Diseases, a Case of the COVID-19. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, as I mentioned, is a university professor. Okay. He is also the director of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network and a commissioner of the United Nations Broadband Commission of Development. He has been the advisor to three United Nations Secretary Generals and currently serves as an SDG advocate under Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. He has spent over 20 years as a professor at Harvard University, where he's received three of his degrees, a BA, an MA, and a PhD. He's also authored numerous best-selling books, and his most recent book uh, that's out 2020 from Columbia University Press is titled Ages of Globalization, Geography, Technology, and Institutions. Thank you again, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, for being here with us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Dr. Sachs, we have a few questions that I'd like to ask you on behalf of the, the Green Institute. Dr. Akina Samulo mentions in her new book, The Principles of Green and Sustainable Science, that the One Health Initiative is practicing and promoting sustainable public health as it works to prevent infectious disease outbreaks. Can you offer our audience some insight into how the One Health Initiative has minimized the outbreaks and spread of disease in developing countries, please? The idea of the One Health Initiative, which is an excellent idea, is that we face the uh, ever-present risks of new diseases spreading from animal reservoirs to humans. And we're in the middle of uh, that pandemic right now with COVID-19. This is a, a disease uh, where the virus has its host uh, almost surely in bats in Southwest China, and it spread to humans uh, either directly through interactions between bats and humans or from bats to some kind of uh, intermediate mammal species uh, then to humans. Okay. We don't know exactly. Uh, the idea that we should be taking care of this kind of risk comes from the fact that we keep experiencing this kind of zoonotic transmission, that is from animals to humans. SARS in 2003, mm -hmm. uh, MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, Ebola, mm -hmm. uh, AIDS actually is also a zoonotic disease mm -hmm. uh, from uh, chimpanzees to humans. Uh, so this is uh, something that is part of the uh, human reality and uh, the One Health Initiative is trying to draw attention and preparedness. Clearly, we haven't succeeded. Uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's killing vast numbers of people. Uh, and uh, in my country, the United States, uh, we have a complete failure of leadership uh, with a absolutely incompetent uh, and venal leader, Trump, uh, and uh, no protection for the American people. So we have more than 100,000 deaths and uh, the epidemic continues. So when politicians ignore science like Trump does, people suffer and die. And that's why uh, one of our most important defenses is to stop horrible people from uh, becoming president of the United States. That last point is, you made several good points, but the last point is a good point. Makes me think of what President Obama said about elections, that they have consequences. They sure do. They certainly do. And the world is experiencing that now. And the United States is experiencing something 
we don't have very much experience with. Uh, Dr. Sachs, that was a great answer. Um, I'd like to turn our attentions to your latest book, which is a great book. Talk a little bit more about it. Um, your latest book, Ages of Globalization, Geography, Technology, and Institutions, Columbia Press 2020, uh, takes readers through a series of seven distinct waves of technological and institutional change throughout human history. Starting with the original settling of the planet by early, uh, excuse me, by early modern humans through long distance migration, then progressing to your reflections on our current globally networked modern society. What reflections would you share with us about our global human society and the challenges of environmental sustainability that we are facing today? Well, we have been interconnected uh, as a species from the start over vast human distances. Uh, in other words, uh, from the first dispersals out of Africa until now, we have been uh, communicating and moving and trading goods over huge distances. Mm -hmm. On the whole, that's been for the benefit of humanity, but it also obviously carries great risks too, like the spread of uh, infectious diseases uh, or uh, like the spread of war and violence uh, when the trade is not uh, trade in goods and services, but uh, movements of armies uh, and trade of uh, killing. Uh, this is another side of globalization. So the book is really a reflection on uh, this interconnectedness and how to get the best of globalization and how to avoid the worst. Uh, we have tried in even in modern times at various points to stop globalization. That's been a disaster, mm -hmm. but we have to learn how to cooperate too and how to cooperate at a global scale. That's why I'm a big believer in the United Nations uh, as vital for us. That's why uh, extreme nationalists uh, who are uh, very uh, arrogant and chauvinistic like Trump don't like the United Nations because it would uh, have the United States obey international rules, not simply uh, the president's whims. This is uh, all the more reason why we need the United Nations when we see uh, such an unstable person in power. We need rules, not just the discretion of individuals with their armies under their command. Great point. Great point. Yes, uh, I would have to agree with you. I also support the idea of multilateralism in the United Nations and all of the other uh, transnational organizations that, uh, you know, the states around the world have put together, you know, uh, the World Health Organization, etc., to protect citizens. And uh, we are seeing a little bit of a fracture uh, in that cooperation. So we are at some sort of uh, an inflection point in not only our current society at home in the U.S., but also globally. I, think it, 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 I would say it's more than a fracture. It is a, an attempt by Trump, Pompeo, and others to destroy these institutions, okay. uh, to pull the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement, to pull the United States out of the World Health Organization, to pull the United States out of the Human Rights Council. Okay. They want to break these institutions because uh, they think that the world belongs to the powerful. Uh, they also think they're powerful, I'm not so sure, but they are destructive. And that's what they're trying to do is to destroy these multilateral institutions. Okay, yes. Um, yes, that is an interesting observation. I really do hope. And I think that we, our institutions are strong. They are under stress and we'll see you know, what the future holds for them. However, um, there are a lot of people watching us today that feel similarly to, to you along those lines and really do support the UN and, and other transnational uh, organizations. Uh, Dr. Sachs, I have another question for you. Uh, this one relates to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the UN SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, were inaugurated in 2015, about five years ago. Can you remind us of some no, uh, notable advancements and achievements in the healthcare system across sub-Saharan Africa uh, related to, you know, public-private partnerships and government uh, initiatives uh, across sub-Saharan Africa to address some of the challenges for health coverage. Um, 
And what are some of the remaining challenges that states, in particular Africa, but the world generally, uh, developing states across the world generally are facing, please? The idea of the sustainable development goals is that everybody should be uh, able to enjoy the benefits of uh, modern technology uh, and economic progress and to uh, live in a environmentally safe planet. We're obviously far from this. The SDGs are goals, they're aspirations. They are not our current reality, right. uh, but they are also an inspiration for action. SDG three calls for universal access to health care. And even in difficult circumstances in Africa, there has been an expansion of access to basic health care, often through very creative means such as deploying community health workers backed up by good information technology because community health workers can play a huge role in monitoring the health of the communities and helping to connect people in need suffering from illnesses for example or pregnant mothers with the health system uh, to get antenatal visits or safe uh, delivery uh, uh, in childbirth or to fight a bout of malaria. So this is a very positive side. And it's these community health workers who are now in the front line of the fight against COVID-19 in Africa. Mm -hmm. yes. This is really the dire emergency right now. Uh, this epidemic spreads easily. Uh, it's very dangerous. It creates lots of deaths. Uh, it needs to be fought, and uh, Africa's health systems uh, need to be girded uh, urgently so that this epidemic is contained. Okay, great, great, great answer. Thank you. I have one more question for you. Uh, earlier, we talked about multilateral institutions, and right now you were just talking about the health systems in Africa across the continent needs to be um, uh, undergirded by uh, outside assistance. So the question is, how can African governments incentivize private investment to build a resilient health structure? Okay, uh, we are noticing in our world today, there is kind of a um, contraction of what used to be considered the, the Washington consensus, uh, Western investment into Africa. And we have this emergence of the Beijing consensus. So I'm wondering, uh, what is the role of official development aid or ODA towards establishing the public health systems in developing countries across Africa going forward? Basically, uh, we should have public health systems. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have private for profit health systems, that can uh, help the needs of uh, people who have means, who have money, but it leaves most people out of the equation. In the United States, we have a for profit health system. Yes. which leaves out tens of millions of people in, in my rich country who can't afford health insurance, who are underinsured or not insured at all. So I recommend a universal publicly financed access to health care. But the problem is, of course, that in poor places, the budget revenues are inadequate for that. And with the COVID-19 epidemic, they're even under more dire stress and households are under dire stress as well because remittance income or earnings income in the marketplace have gone down tremendously also. So we're facing big budget deficits uh, around the world. This makes it harder for developing countries. Development aid and tax reform are the two most important ways to help poor countries to close their budget deficits. Mm -hmm. If rich companies paid the taxes that they really should pay, mm -hmm. then we would be getting somewhere. But of course, the companies are protected by the United States government and uh, by powerful interests so that they don't pay the taxes that they should be paying in developing countries. So the answer is we need you could say development aid. I'm always in favor of more transfers to help poor countries to meet their urgent needs. Mm -hmm. We also need a fairer system uh, that doesn't give impunity
to the rich and powerful companies to take what they want from poor countries and not leave behind even revenues in the government coffers. But this is also about power. And unfortunately, power is in the hands of the wealthy right now. Wow. Very interesting point, Dr. Sachs. Very interesting point. Uh, at this point, we are out of time. And I am very grateful for you sharing your ideas uh, with us today on building a resilient health structure to combat novel diseases, a, post for, uh, a case for the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Well, thank you for thank you for excellent questions, and thank you for your leadership, uh, which is very important. Now uh, we have to act together, act sensibly, act sustainably, and act on the basis of science uh, and against the whims of uh, corrupt politicians like Trump. So this is a big challenge. Greatly appreciate your leadership on these issues, as well as Dr. Adenike's leadership as well. You have a fine day today, sir. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me join. You're welcome. Gentlemen, please stay tuned for our next session. We'll be with you in a few moments. Thanks.